Now don't tell me you guys thought that the challenges were done just because I haven't uploaded one in over a year. No, 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 I'm still here to make my life harder, don't you worry about that. For today's task, we will be trying to beat the evil within without using any firearms. No pistols, no shotguns, no nothing. If it fires a bullet or an arrow, then I am offended by it and will not use it to take out my enemies. My only tool will be a knife and the ones God created for me, my hands and maybe an occasional grenade throw if needed. If you guys want to see more commentary by yours truly, hit that subscribe button and notification bell and let's get right into it. Right off rip, you can tell our main protagonist Sebastian has been through some shit in his life. Unbuttoned shirt with the tie not even fully pressed up against his collar tells me that this man has a back pocket full of Marlboros and a flask full of whiskey. I arrived to the crime scene, and let me tell you, I snorted the stench in this area like it was crack. Something awful definitely happened here, and I don't think it was a mere man that did this. No, 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 no. This was the work of something out of this realm. Sure enough, as soon as I checked the security cameras, by golly, did I get my answer. This walking skin graft instant transmissioned his way to me, and the next thing you know, I was tied up and upside down. If that wasn't bad enough, there was a whopper of a man right in front of me wearing some sort of chastity belt. As soon as I saw him drag the upper half of a man across the floor, I knew it was time to skedaddle. And believe me, the skedaddling ensued very quickly as soon as I hit this tripwire and alerted the wannabe Leatherface. I took a chainsaw to my ankle and got thrown into a saw trap. But this was a mere flesh wound as I effortlessly maneuvered my way out of this area. A blood slide into a tub that most likely gave me a new type of hepatitis led me to a sewer system that I heroically climbed out of. Chastity Face did not stop his pursuit of me, so I hid in a locker and tried my hardest not to make a noise while I was shitting my pants. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where stealth plays a huge role into this game. Using my high level IQ brain, I tossed a bottle across the room as a distraction and simply limped my way to safety, practically dragging my fibula across the floor. The sadist caught up to me and these wheelchairs did the complete opposite of what they are intended to do and just hindered my movement. Luckily, I made it to the elevator right in the nick of time and just sat there thinking about what the fuck just happened to me. The intro credits rolled and we get treated to this intro song that absolutely slaps. It's called A Long Way Down by Masafumi Takata and Gary Newman and it's just... It's just mwah, perfect for this game. So, I make it outside this asylum, and I guess the ancient Mayas were right because it was the end of the fucking world. My Uber driver came just in time, along with my partner Kidman, a doctor, and some unhinged little boy named Leslie. Our Uber driver drove like a madman, and well, he died. Leslie predicted what would eventually happen, and then it happened. Chapter 1 ended, and Chapter 2 had me wake up in some sort of abandoned asylum. The nurse treated me very nicely, and then I had to perform a lobotomy on myself. I spontaneously engulfed into flames, and then found myself crawling out of a crashed ambulance. No one was around me, not even my partner, but that's alright, because I found my new best friend, a healing syringe. I had a suspicion that me and him would become very close very soon. A little further up ahead, the game finally introduced me to the main weapon I'd be using for my run, my fists. And would you look at that, it also gave me a target to practice on. I threw absolute haymakers at this hellspawn only to find out it took a whopping 20 blows for him to finally fall. 20 blows. That number alone almost made me gag, but I said fuck it, let's just see how far I can get. Leslie, that poor sweet soul, warned me about a trap that was right in front of me, and I disarmed it for parts. My man Sebastian was off the bean and kept seeing women that weren't really there, and then I upgraded my melee damage because, come on, are you kidding me? 20 hits? No. Other than a vicious beating, my next form of dispatching these demons was by performing a stealth kill. Saves me about 5 minutes of swinging. This old man stared into a light, and well, he became my next opponent. I tried to fight one of these dudes head on, and even managed to stomp on him a few times, but my lord, they hit hard. At the moment, I was pretty much a one-hit kill. For my third attempt, I managed to get a stealth kill on the first man, and for the second, I tried it as well, but it didn't go as planned. As a matter of fact, I died again. But don't worry, don't worry, I don't make the same mistake twice. I tried to hit this infected with a bottle, and well I missed, but then I put a blade through his cranium to make sure he really understood how much embarrassment missing that throw brought to me. 
A failed sneak attack and my asthmatic lungs nearly brought me to death's door, but I hit them with the Uno reverse card and somehow managed to perform another sneak attack. I burnt one with a torch and watched as another unalived himself. If there's one thing this game likes to do is hit you when you're at your most vulnerable. Like when I was turning this wheel to open the door. I thought my life was over, but then I left to do something in the real world. When I came back, I learned from my lesson and burnt these two before they tried anything smart. Boy. I bet they feel real stupid right now. With those two now out of the way, I was able to open the gate and fail the challenge when a cutscene forced a Bastion to blow someone's brains out. And this was for no reason, mind you, because in the end he just falls into water and chapter 2 ends. Anyways, chapter 3 started and I upgraded my melee damage to level 3 because if it's 3, I'll go on a killing spree. Little did I know that this area here would be one of the most disgusting, dreadful experiences I've ever had. So immediately I realized that damn, this place was littered with bombs that would shred me to pieces. I came across Marcelo the doctor and somehow he made it here without using a gun, so clearly I had some competition in this challenge. The doctor showed me the way out which was blocked by this huge gate that I eventually had to open. One of us could try to lure them away while the other gets the gate open. You're the one with the gun. Man, you, you couldn't be more wrong. So, open a gate. How hard could it be? Well. Let me tell you, if you're indoors, it is very easy to get caught by one of these infected. These closed spaces sometimes lead to rooms that have no way out, which makes it quite a challenge to maneuver around the enemies. Thankfully, some enemies do drop axes, which help me in these sticky situations. So, you got maneuverability as a problem, and next, we got a sniper. This phase member up on a balcony poses a huge threat, since at any moment, I can just get blasted. Now, I could just beat him to death, but I remember that, oh wait, it takes 20 plus hits in order for me to actually take him out. Which leads me to my next problem. There's like a horde of infected following me, so I couldn't just take my time beating this guy up. I needed to find ways to take out these enemies in quick successions. Luring them into wire traps helped, but there aren't that many. Grabbing this torch nearly cost me my life, but these are the risks you must take in order to thin down the horde even by just one enemy. Dodging and weaving was the name of the game, and when a stealth kill presented itself, I did not hesitate even if it meant my potential demise. In this barnyard, I saw that the BDSM man was chained up and this leads me to my final problem. I need to set him free in order to progress. Well, now that you guys know the main issues I had, let me show you how the first attempt went. I tried to set him free by throwing a bottle and I missed like the pathetic gamer I was. I couldn't find a way to set him free just yet, so I decided, hey, I got this torch, so I might as well take out the sniper so I at least have some peace of mind. I took a bullet to the chest, but he took a torch to his whole body. I found a grenade, and let me tell you, a light bulb lit up inside my head. I used said grenade to free Stinky over here. The beast grabbed his chainsaw, the music amped up, the infected came in, and my pacemaker started to work double time because my god, did releasing this guy really bump up the difficulty. I now had to make decisions faster than before and my movement had to be perfect. I tried to impale this man with these spikes that fall from the ceiling, but of course I missed. I burnt these hay bales and actually saw that it did damage, so man, that was great news. The game made this poor infected blind and well, it cost him his life. Unfortunately for me, the lungs of Sebastian are equivalent to someone in an iron lung and well, that's what ended my first attempt at this area. So, for my second attempt, I headed directly towards the barn to disable any traps that were around and looted the area to find an axe. I then used that axe to somehow blow off the head of the sniper. Now that he was taken care of, this haunted with another axe showed up and you know I really wanted his weapon. I went for a swing but accidentally fired my gun instead, but thankfully it missed. I then tried to fight this man one on one, but this wasn't the case since another ugly fuck showed up right behind him. My knuckles must have had explosives attached to them because the final blow I dealt this man left him unrecognizable. I didn't want to use the axe this fella dropped on his buddy because I'd much rather save it for when I really needed it, but I guess I really needed it now because this guy fucked me. Alright, so for my next attempt, I decided to enter the house to the right and see if I could get a couple of stealth kills. It was going great until a lady showed up and ruined my plans. I now had to try and defeat both of these as silently as I could because I didn't want to draw any attention to myself. Thankfully, going under the bed managed to throw off my trail and I was able to drive my blade into the skull of this poor NPC. 
Now, I just had the lady to worry about. I wanted to stealth kill her, but I decided to just test my luck and fight her mano a mano. I won. A checkpoint appeared on my screen, so I knew I must have been doing something right this time. Since this house was completely cleared out, I looted what I could and tested out the trap that was inside of this place. Oh nice. A little shed caught my attention, but all that was inside of it was my next victim. I purposely missed the bottle throw to let him know what's about to happen, and then hit him a total of 14 times until the glow in his eyes finally faded away. He dropped a grenade which was a fantastic surprise, and then I proceeded to get 3 more stealth kills. I was now in the barn where one more kill allowed me to get the axe. I don't think I need to tell you whose head I needed to slam this axe into. This was looking too good. But I came across an enemy on top of a staircase who admittedly got a good hit on me, but then somehow I took a lethal blow when I clearly avoided the swing. This nearly sent me into an anger so furious that my keyboard almost exploded when it hit my wall. A damn near perfect run ruined by shit hitboxes. Alright, alright. I now know that this area is somewhat possible, so my confidence skyrocketed. This man traded me his life for his torch, and then I immediately ran towards the sniper house and stealthily killed another enemy. I got hit from behind and then kept locking onto the dead body instead of the enemy right in front of me. Thankfully though, I did get the hit in. This axe I picked up was used to chop flesh instead of wood, and then I decided, you know what, let's just free the butcher. I threw a grenade at him that thankfully blew up in time, and then used the hay bales to add some additional damage. Me and Sebastian were thinking the same thing, so I lured the butcher to this house with the spike trap and used it on him. He fell to the ground and I beat him twice. Unfortunately, I couldn't get him the second time, so I ran all the way to the next trap where again I proceeded to show myself that I am just straight dog water. I repeated the cycle of using the trap on him and after one more hit, the butcher went down. Ruvik revealed himself but ran away because he's pussy and I grabbed the chainsaw the butcher had and used it to finally open this damn gate. Before I left, I collected anything I could from this area like this one grenade and then Marcelo decided to tag along with me and move on to chapter 4. And with that guys, that'll do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed what you saw and wish me luck since I'm still currently on this game trying to complete the challenge. Subscribe for more content, comment your thoughts down below and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.